Right then, you asked for this. Actually, you really did. In the comments below, uh, we've just had uh, three special editions of 58 Keys about making ebooks, and you asked about the next bits. Um, how you sell them, really, on your website, on Amazon, on Apple Books, and all of that. So, three guesses what we're going to do right now. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which is always for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads. Do please subscribe, uh, not least so that you can most easily see all of the Making Ebooks playlist, uh, where you and I get to talk about uh, it was the, the cheapest, the fastest, and what turned out to be the most awkward way of making ebooks, but then better ways of print books. Each edition also has descriptions with links to the apps and services that have come up. Now, selling ebooks, or indeed the print books, um, we're going to cover certain things. We're going to cover selling directly to people. Uh, it might make you uncomfortable, but we'll sort that out. Selling on your website, selling via Amazon Kindle or Apple Books. And then just at the very end, there are some extra points that we need to make that are particularly about how you do all of that with print books. First up, selling directly. Throughout these uh, special episodes, I've been making and remaking a book called uh, Countdown, which was a real project I had to do with a young writer's um, workshop just before we started talking about these things. Now, I am not going to do this next thing for that particular workshop, but I could email each of the attendees and say, yeah, bung me a fiver, 10 bucks, I'll send you the ebook. Or rather, I could do that if they had already agreed to e my emailing them about this kind of thing. I'm in Europe where we have uh, the General Data Protection Regulations, GDPR, and if that isn't applicable ever in the world yet, it's actually a really good model for all of us to follow. Under GDPR, I can't mass email everyone who was on that workshop. I can't go back five years and mass email everyone from any workshops back then. Nor can I buy a list of email addresses anymore and then just blast everybody out with email and hope something happens. What I can do is tell people at these workshops that I have books. I can make it part of the ticket sale information. I mean, lots of different things, actually, and lots of grey areas, I suppose. But in short, there's this. If there are people who are expecting you to email them about a book, because you've told them, you can. And then I rather suggest that you are obligated to email. You said you would, so you do it. There's nothing else you need to do there except figure out how they can pay you. Here in the UK, it's quite common to uh, just give somebody a bank detail so they can pay straight into your account. But I did this once uh, with a woman in America. I can't remember what the project was about, but she acted like she was stung. She acted like I was trying to rob her. They were my bank details, not hers. Can't figure that one out. But, you know, different countries, different bank, wildly different banking systems, and just different people. Skip all of those possible problems by getting a PayPal account. PayPal is free to join. You know, they make their money out of a cut from your sales. You know. And through PayPal.com, you can make a link that uh, is for your book. And then you give that link to a buyer, they click it, you get paid. You then have to email them the book. And actually, that's the thing I don't like about this. What if I'm on holiday or if I just forget to check that particular email account for a couple of days? You end up with a disgruntled customer, unless you instead do this next thing. You've got a website, or if you haven't, you can very quickly make one. So what you do is you chuck a copy of the book's cover up on there and put the PayPal link underneath it. So far, that might as well be the same thing as contacting people directly, except your buyer need not, need not wait for you to get back from a trip. Once they've paid, PayPal can send them back to your website and to any part of that site that you choose. Um, tell me in the comments below if I'm mad to do what I'm about to tell you or if I'm just mad to tell you about it. Uh, but what I will tend to do in this case is I will have two pages on my website and one is of course the buy the book page. It's wonderful. And there's the link. And that page, I promote that everywhere I can. The other one is the thank you for buying page. Of course there is. But on that one, which I never promote, never link to, never mention, except in PayPal, in PayPal, I make that second page be the destination, one where buyers should be sent back to. And then on that page, 
I include the downloadable copy of the book right there. Actually, more than that, I include multiple different versions, including a PDF one. Let the buyer, the reader, choose the one they know works for them. Here's the mad part though. That second page is just another page on my site. If, if someone wanted to, if they thought about it, they could probably figure out the address of the page and go straight to it without going through PayPal, without paying me. Let them. I hope they don't, and so far it doesn't look as if anybody has. But the cost to me of making certain that that cannot happen is just too high. I don't want to end up running a whole e-commerce system with my own back-end credit card processing engine or something. Not when all I ever use this for is actually the odd case where I have a special edition for a particular group I'm working with. I could use it for everything, for all of my books, but instead I use Amazon Kindle and Apple Books. I use them partly because I have to. Many of my books are published by other people. And I, I, uh, British Film Institute, for example, they have access to the ebook versions of the thing I do for them. I don't. To sell ebooks or print books on Amazon Kindle, on Apple Books, or really any of these services, you need certain things. You need the book. You need the cover separately. Uh, you need various descriptions and details, which I'll describe. You need an account with Amazon, Apple, whoever. And I say that you also need an ISBN. There's some dispute about that, though. Every book you buy has an international standard book number. But neither Apple nor Amazon are going to force you, are going to require you to provide one. If you don't, though, then officially and legally, Amazon or Apple is the publisher, not you. In the short term, I honestly don't know what difference that really makes, but it is my work. I am doing all the publishing. I want the credit. Plus, apparently, there are uh, there are some things to do with uh, stock levels and booksellers and marketing, though chiefly for print and self-published titles are hard to get into those anyway. Just buy an ISBN, or actually, buy 10. If you want an e-book and a print book, for example, well, that's two ISBN right away. And since they are sold as one, 10 or hundreds, 10 is typically the best bet. In the US, go to ISBN.com, where presently, early-ish 2021, it's $295 for 10. In the UK, go to the Nielsen ISBN store, where 10 cost £164. Go to those sites, links below, by the way, even if you don't want an ISBN yet, because they both include a huge amount of really useful information about self-publishing. Uh, next, the account. For both Amazon and Apple, uh, you, you sign up free to their service and they take a cut from your sales. Uh, they also handle all of the payments. Uh, you, you don't need PayPal for this. Um, it can take longer to get paid because you can make two months for them to pay you any earnings. That's not so good. Uh, both Amazon and Apple uh, give you links to your book, just like I said with PayPal. So you can take that link and send that directly to people. You can put that on your website, all of this. Uh, with Amazon, though, your link can also be an affiliate one. When you, somebody goes through a link like that, Amazon coughs up some of its profits to you for getting people to buy anything through your link. It's only pennies, but since it doesn't cost your buyer, your reader, anything, and since it is taking money out of Amazon Science, it's your civic duty to look into Amazon affiliate links, also called Amazon Associates in different countries. To sign up for Amazon Kindle, go to kdp.amazon.com. For Apple, you need what they call an iTunes Connect account, uh, for which you just have to go to authors.apple.com. Actually, go to there. Go to Apple's one anyway, even if you don't want to do Apple Books, because recently Apple added a lot of really useful videos and information about publishing, which, which applies to them, obviously, but also to anywhere else in general. What I don't recommend with Apple is that you use a feature in Pages uh, called Publish to Apple Books. I mean, bless Apple for trying to make this simple, but just as um, accepting all the defaults, whatever, doesn't make for a great ebook from Pages, so publishing directly from the app, it's a bit of a compromise. Plus, it only works with Apple Books. So you, you've got to prepare the text and the ebook yourself for everywhere else. You might as well do it for them too. Get more control, have them ready for both services. Now, when you log into your account and I the service, the process is uh, it's very similar. Here it is on Amazon Kindle. Amazon recommends a Word file if your book is long and text heavy. So if it's a 300 page PhD thesis, use Word. You also need to upload a cover. 
separately. Amazon will offer to make you a, co a cover uh, and it will offer to do it for a fee, but I'd rather you did it yourself. And I mean, either actually yourself or you're hiring an artist, a photographer you need, because Amazon Kindle's offerings, well, they're a bit generic. Next, you will be asked to enter the details of the book, which is, you know, the title, your name, the ISBN, a description and then category details, fiction or non-fiction, horror or nuclear engineering, whatever it is, and also the price. Now, this part, that's very so much that I can't give you re useful examples. But both Amazon and Apple, they have kind of recommended minimums and maximums for different types of books. Plus, you set it once in your local currency and they figure it out for all the other currencies. Next, longest part, you get a chance to preview the book online. Do it. Check it thoroughly and go back to your PDF or your Word document if you need to make any changes and go right around again. Then when you're happy, hit the button and it all goes off to an actual human being at Amazon, Kindle or Apple. As it is a human being, and, and moreover, it's one who does this a lot, he or she, they are going to spot things you can't. And when they tell you, when you make those corrections and you go back through and both you and they are happy, that's it. Your ebook is on sale. It can take a couple of days go, to go through the human being checking stage thing. And then it can take easily a day for the book to appear on the store. And that's, that's just because Amazon and Apple have servers around the world. And it takes time for a new book to ripple out across all of them. But they do. And then your ebook is on sale and that does feel very, very good. Two more things, two extra things you need to know about selling printed copies of your books, so in paperbacks or hardbacks instead of, or as well as ebooks. Without doubt, there is a printing company near you who will produce a first class book. And if you can then, support your local printer. Except whoever they are, without question, they physically have to print so many copies at once, which means you have to pay for so many copies in one go and then you have to store them as well. Whereas Amazon and other services like Lulu will print on demand. The book does not exist until someone buys it, which is philosophically really disturbing, isn't it? I've just thought about that. Um, but you have no copies to store, you have no money to pay out in advance. Plus, the process of selling a print book is the same as selling for the ebook, or preparing it until the very end. And this is the other thing about print books. The checking stage is different. You'll still see a lot in the online preview, but you absolutely must get a printed copy of the book and check that. You must. Amazon will print you a test copy of the book at cost, which is very nice. Except when it's a test copy, or at least uh, still seems to be the case. This used to be printed in one place in the US somewhere. If you're overseas here in the UK, or even if you're just in a different state, it can then take ages for that test copy to be shipped to you. Weeks. I'm not kidding. It took weeks when I did it last time. But there is something you can do. You can cross your fingers and tell Amazon that, you, of course, of course, I've checked it. Ah, go on with yourselves. And then put it on sale. Once the book is on sale, you go back into your Amazon account and temporarily set the price to the minimum that Amazon will allow you to. And then you buy a copy of the book like a regular customer would. As it's now on sale, I mean, it really is on sale and available on the store. It doesn't get printed at this test facility, wherever it is. Instead, it gets printed locally or at least somewhere much closer to you, much, much closer. And therefore, you get the book in a day or two. Check out that copy thoroughly. And then make any changes you need go back through the process system and when you're done put the price back up to whatever you want and then finally go around telling everyone you can in the world that the book is out yeah it is exhausting describing all of this but i promise you it isn't exhausting to do it besides you asked for this you asked for this detail don't look at me like that uh, thank you for asking. Uh, ask for anything more in the comments, please do. And thank you for watching this last ebook special of 58 Keys. Remember, all four are in the Making Ebooks playlist on the 58 Keys YouTube channel playlist. And do remember to describe too, because I want to know how you get on with your ebooks. Take care of yourself, eh? And I'll see you soon.